The Office of Energy Development is charged with advancing Utah's energy economy, and that includes advancing energy efficiency and renewable energy options as well. And we have a lot of tools available to us to do this. One of the key tools that we have is a federally funded state energy program, and it is through the National Department of Energy that we're able to offer a variety of options, and we can offer this to our communities, such as our schools. We can offer it to our buildings, like our museums, or other public structures, so that they can create a higher quality of life within their buildings and also realize energy savings through energy efficiency and distributed resources like solar on-site panels. In order to improve the environmental condition in a building, whether it's lighting, HVAC, my budget really is not enough to handle that. And we received the, I think it's $744,000. And with that money, we were able to do three lighting upgrades. We put in occupancy sensors so that as the students left the room or the teacher, the lights would go off. As a district, we were not afraid of the loan aspect because we felt like in the long term, the savings would more than offset any uh, risk of the loan. We felt like as an ongoing cost, as, our, as I mentioned, our utilities are about 5% of our budget. We felt like this would help us maintain and control those costs going forward. So that's why we looked at the loan. The new energy codes are very stringent and uh, requires to do a lot more and that's helping. What we have been able to do with our existing buildings has been fantastic from day one. What has made these schools more comfortable and saved operational dollars is not replacing the equipment but repairing it so it's operating as the architect or the mechanical engineers wished it to operate. So the building we're in today is the Community Learning Center. It's officially called the Mountain View Glendale Community Learning Center. But the uniqueness of this building is we get a chance to teach about energy efficiency and reclaiming uh, woods. Then you have solar arrays on this building that covers, I think, close to 45%, if not more, of the energy use of this whole building. So you can teach about sustainability as well as teaching about those skills that are necessary to have the community be healthy and strong into the future. Back in 2010, when federal funds became available through the Recovery Act uh, mechanism, we applied for some grants through the uh, Governor's Office of Energy Development and were awarded uh, for projects that would help us improve our lighting. And we were able to eliminate all of our most inefficient lighting uh, that remained in the three high schools. And, and it proved to uh, be a, a tremendous success. The museum had outgrown its space, and so a number of years ago, we started to think about our new home. And one of the most important things for us was to make sure that it was a high degree of sustainability. Um, because we felt we had an obligation to the people of Utah to talk about sustainable options. So the reason that we picked this building was because it was designed to be a very efficient building. It was designed to be a LEED Gold certified building. And that is the right way to think about renewable energy. Starting with a really efficient building, obviously you get the best price per kWh just from having a really efficient uh, facility. And then supplementing with renewable energy is the best way to get the, the most cost-effective renewable energy when you talk about building integrated renewable energy projects. About half 
halfway through construction, we learned about the ARRA grants. And so we worked with the State Energy Office to apply for those monies. So together with that funding, um, we began to design the array. And that's when we brought S-Power in. So they built the array, they generate the electricity, they maintain the array, and they sell the electricity back to the University of Utah, which is our parent. This project not only is it a source of power for the museum, but it's also an exhibit that we can use to educate the public about the benefits of solar power and renewable energy and distributed generation. When people walk out onto the rooftop terrace, the sky terrace, they're surrounded by almost 1,400 solar panels. They can come into the museum. We have an interactive display that talks about how much energy is generated every year. And we hope that people take those lessons and think about it in their own lives. In 1938, the Midway Town Board President, William Howder, and the board applied for uh, a grant to build a recreation center, and it was called the Midway Recreation Center, and that was this building right here. It is the most significant historical uh, public building in Midway. We decided, of course, that we wanted to replace the windows and doors, we felt like we needed to talk to the state energy office. And so we applied for an energy efficiency and conservation block grant. We felt like as a city council that if we were gonna ever, you know, save one building in town, this would be the building we would want to save. It's a benefit to the community, we all use it. Um, it's historic and, you know, great value to our community. And so, you know, we felt like it was important to invest the money and the time to fix it and make it so that we could continue to use it with more comfort. In 2010, which was the last full year before the rehabilitation, we spent uh, $5,083 on just electricity. And then in 2012, after the building was rehabilitated, we spent $4,386 for just for electricity. And that, was, that equals out to about a 14% saving. So we're very happy about that. And that'll go on saving year after year after year. I think it makes us, all of us, a little more conscientious about the energy that we use, the amount of energy we use, and the things that we can do as citizens overall to be conservative in, in how we use our resources because they are natural resources that are limited. And we need, always need to be really careful how we use those resources. And so I think this was a good, exercise and a good place to, to get started as far as looking into how we can all as a citizen, as a community, be more energy efficient. These are all icons in our communities as far as we're concerned because the institutions that educate our children are so important to what we are going to realize for future generations. And the better energy future that we can give them, the better quality of life that they're going to have. So what better place to have that than the buildings that are visited by our students, by our teachers, and by our citizens.